come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Coming your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, because we're on a quest to colonize the world. That's right, one person at a time colin Colin (laughs) oh Uh, see how that worked out i didn't even intend that but bam Uh i was trying to keep in the theme of tonight's movie Uh but uh uh, these are the internet radio superstars holly michaela and i'm colin sean is on assignment in antarctica maybe i was gonna say in antarctica yeah yeah Yeah. quite possibly he's out driving one of those snow cats around right (laughs) He uh, ran out of gas somewhere. Somewhere. He he's got so his quickly. GPS and the he's hoping one. to God that somebody's going to come and find if him. If all four of us went to Antarctica, he'd be the he first one die to first. die, right? Yeah. 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 Easily. He I think he first. would agree. Yeah. Probably. You know? Yeah. Going down the vent hole. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by Colin. You. What did you choose for us to watch tonight? Tonight we had a blast from my past. We watched mm. The X Files. The X Files, the show. The movie. The movie. Which right. movie? Um, because there's two, right? There's two. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, now I'm like, uh, what's, what was the second one? I want to. I want to believe. Yeah. 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 Wait, and what year was this? Uh, this was 1998. Well, I know what you're asking me because everybody always says it's X Files fight the future, but mm. I, according to the title card, it is just the X Files. This so is, is one of those fight l- the future the tagline. Yes, I think okay. so. But now, mm-hmm. like on the DVD cover and you know everywhere you look, it's X Files fight the future. It's kind mm-hmm. of a live die repeat Edge of Tomorrow thing. That yep. movie's actually called Edge of Tomorrow, mm-hmm. but okay. Uh, Nineteen ninety eight, mm-hmm. directed by Rob Bowman. Do what work do we know of this Rob Bowman? You have actually. We've actually covered one of his uh, movies on Wait. our show. That's Which right. One? Rain of Fire. There it is. Yep, really? that's right. Huh. He did Rain of Fire after this, and also Electra. Oh, wow. And then I think after that, it was one of those, uh, (laughs) Rob Bowman was, uh, he directed a bunch of episodes of the show, so he was tapped Mm -hmm. uh, to do the feature film version, and then he was able to use that to make uh, some features, Mm -hmm. at least three of them, and then I think retreated back to television. He's still working, Mm -hmm. I mean... But uh, he's yeah. not a feature film I mean, it, it makes sense because this does feel like a two hour long episode of the X-Files. It does really it? does. Yes. Okay. Because really that, does. I guess, is the question. So I guess going into this, um, I was curious what your, like, how much, uh, what your experience with the X-Files was. Because, uh, uh, you know, they always said when they were going to make a feature film version of the TV show, that it was going to be able to appeal to non-fans and fans. Mm-hmm. Right. Me watching it, having watched all the episodes, mm-hmm. like I know who everyone is and everything that's going on. Mm-hmm. How does it play? Um, yeah. Um, so, uh, and what's I, your experience? I guess we should show. touch on our history yeah. of the show, I, right? So yeah. I did watch the X Files for a while. I don't think I didn't watch it like consistently throughout the entire series, but I did watch it pretty frequently. Like there was a a period where like it was like Sunday night TV. My family watched X Files. Mm-hmm. You know, we watched it all together. Um, oh, so after it moved to Sunday nights, because that was the thing. It originally was on Friday. Yeah. Nobody's found Uh-oh, it. Oh, that's was, not good. And then when, they moved it to the premium Sunday night. When slot. it was Sunday nights, we used to watch it. Um, But that was, you know, what, mm-hmm. 30 years ago? Like tw- 25 years ago? Like however long it was. And I don't really remember much. Of it. I do remember she had a baby at one point, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Just, is it an alien baby or is it Mulder's baby? It's Mulder's baby. Okay. I couldn't remember if it yep. was an alien yeah. baby yep. or not. Yep, yep. I do remember that, but otherwise I don't really remember much from the show. Yeah. But watching it tonight, I I was sitting there thinking, you know, if, if someone had never watched any X Files, knew nothing about it, I think they could follow pretty well. It's uh, because I think everyone pretty much knows they're two FBI agents. They mm-hmm. they investigate the the weird shit. You know, I think everyone has a general knowledge of that. There was the only time I really was like, okay, I have no idea what's going on. Is when we literally looked at you and was like, who are yeah, these people? Yeah, yeah. There was, there was oh, clearly, the lone gunman. There yeah. was some inside baseball yep. stuff. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. That was really yeah. the only moment that I was like, okay, this yep. is where you lose me. But yeah. for the most part, I think anyone could watch it. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't think it's yeah. it would lose too much momentum. That's just me. But mm-hmm. I don't know what Kayla thinks. Uh, I mean, I was I was a bit younger than you guys when this was airing. Um, but I do remember. Uh, 
when my older brother would babysit me, he would always want to watch it. And he, we, m- my sister and I were not allowed to watch it because my mom was like, they're crybabies. This will terrify them. And she was <laughs> probably right. And uh, so, like, I remember catching glimpses of it and being terrified. Um, I remember an um, episode about a guy squeezing into vents. Yep. I remember. Tombs. Um, I re- remember us. Uh, um, something about Mulder being astral projected into space and floating around oh, yep, 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 yep. and Scully trying to connect with him yeah. and that being really weird. Mm-hmm, and that's mm-hmm. about like, I know that there are two FBI agents. Uh, she's like the logical one. He's like the mm-hmm. conspiracy theory there one and go. his sister sure. was abducted and there's sexual tension. And that's like about it. That's what yeah. I got. Yeah. Like, so, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. So like, yeah. I felt like I followed the movie pretty well and I was pretty invested in it. And, yeah, that, but I, yeah, there was clearly like inside references that like were very pointed that I was like, okay, mm. I know it. Th- this is supposed to mean something based on the music cues and mm. stuff, but okay. I don't know what it is. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, the biggest of that is the appearance, the sudden third act appearance for one scene of the lone gunman. So in the show, they were, uh, they had a news, like a, a newspaper. They were, or I can't oh, remember like if it was a, a website. They were all conspiracy zine. guys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they were the lone gunmen, mm-hmm. and um, they uh, spun off a show called The Lone Gunman, which I think lasted about a well, like year. Two episodes? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, because I think, if I remember correctly, the first episode of that dealt with a plane hijacking Uh-oh. and it came Ooh. around. Uh, that must have been 2001. Oof, and yikes. so, yeah, I can't remember if there, there was some problem with like, well, I remember yeah. 24 also had that. There was yeah. something that went in a plane crashed yeah. in, in the first episode of 24 mm-hmm. that they had to like Which put a warning because... up at the beginning of the show because mm-hmm. they were like, we shot this a while ago. Well, and with and 24, now, that yeah. means it's going to be the whole season. The whole season is yes. going to be about the plane crash because yeah. it's 24. It's literally about 24 Yeah. Hours. So like, yeah. it's not even just like one episode they can ditch it. That's their whole season. I don't so. think it was. That one it wasn't. It was, it was just, they, everybody was very, I mean, obviously it after September. Been- September like 11th, the they were very, yeah. uh, uh, um, you know, sensitive to anything involving yeah. uh, right. And with 24, crashing. it could have been like the first hour was a plane crash. Yeah, that, like triggered no, all of it, these things. It felt to me yeah. like it was at the end. Somebody who was on okay. the plane like ended up crashing, and they gotcha. took them down, and that was like you know, yeah. Gotcha. I don't remember mm-hmm. if that was even a catalyst, but um, yeah, the X Files. Um, this movie takes place between the fifth and sixth seasons of the show. So, I mean, okay. there was always kind of like talk that there was going to be an X Files movie. Mm-hmm. I think for a while it was kind of like building. I guess that's the idea, right? That you're mm-hmm. gonna, you know, it's like it's on TV. It's on Fridays. Nobody watches it. Then it developed this cult following. Then it became a thing. And then it was all over everywhere. The X Files was huge, mm-hmm. and um. Which is kind of funny because, like, my own personal history with it, like, I didn't come to it, like, when it was, you know, when the first episodes were airing. Mm -hmm. I actually did come into it, like, around season four or something once the uh, pop culture, uh, you know, thing Mm -hmm. had exploded. Mm -hmm. Um, But I always remember um, it kind of, like, it tapped into, like, the zeitgeist thing in the 90s. There was, like, this huge popularity of alien abduction Mm -hmm. stories which is kind of weird that that doesn't seem to really exist anymore right like everybody was getting abducted by aliens in the in the in the late 80s and 1990s yeah Yeah. tire of us or yeah right what happened uh, they've seen enough yeah yeah and you know what don't, I can't blame them. <laughs> yeah, but it gave her, well, there was the, you know, the, the, I remember books being written on the Roswell crash. Yeah. That was very, you know, in public uh, consciousness, just like, I mean, like shows like Nightline and Nova would do, you know, things. Bring back on, Nova. Yeah. Right. I bet there's a I bet there's a Nova channel on Pluto TV. I bet Pluto I TV bet. has a 24-7 Probably, Nova probably. You guys are too young to remember if I say this word, in search of. With Leonard Nimoy, I've, I've heard, heard of it, of but it, yeah. I, yes, right? I am too young. Mm-hmm. Where they where they went after the Bigfoot mm-hmm. and you know all this stuff, and I remember shows like that's incredible, and later mm-hmm. Unsolved Mysteries, but they were always mm-hmm. these shows that kind of had this. Uh, I don't know. Like when I was a kid, they freaked me out. You know, you, Colin, you need to watch Paranormal Caught on Camera. <laughs> That's exactly what this is. I know and it's been, like, awesome. Ghost Love hunters and all this stuff. But no, yeah. this is different. Paranormal Caught on Camera is only footage from the last five years, and it's 
all, it's literally caught on camera. There's no ghost hunter shit. No bringing these EVPs in and talking to spirits. It's all user submitted, like oh. Bigfoot, yeah. ghost, hauntings, like, but it's it runs the gamut videos, of shit. Yeah. Paranormal yes. caught on camera. And it's yeah. really good. And each episode <laughs> has like three different videos that they dissect. And it'll be like one cryptid, one ghost haunting, and one, other, like, they mix them up pretty good. Yeah. But. The best part is all the commentators on the show are podcast hosts. So why are we not on Paranormal Riot <laughs> Camera? Thank you. Like the guys from Monsters Among Us and the guys from Last House on the Left are commentators on this show. I know. We should be on. I there. watch it all the time. I'm like, why am I not on yes. the show? Wait. This is right up my alley. Yeah. Have you ever had a paranormal experience or an alien experience? Yes. What? Yeah. We, yes. We've talked off mic we've about our paranormal about experiences. I've been yeah, in a haunted yet. house. But, Aliens? But they, you don't have ever to seen? have one. I've to seen come. the lights. Okay. Those but shifty Colin, lights. I've seen those. This, this show is just them watching the video and giving their opinion. Oh, oh, oh yeah, I can do yeah. that. Yeah, that's okay. what I'm saying. They're podcast <laughs> yeah, hosts and they do that. They're literally like the experts. Yeah. They're like dissecting it. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. okay so that's why I'm gotcha, like, gotcha. we can do this. Yeah. Yeah. All right, then. Get us, get us on Paranormal Caught on Camera. Yeah. We need to come up with a title. We, we I should literally do like went on a ghost hunt with the guys from Ghost Hunters. Mm-hmm. I was made for this show. Yeah. All right, so if you're listening out there, yeah, yeah, and you, you got to hook up at what the travel channel is what it it's is on, travel oh. Channel, yeah, oh, okay, all right, yeah, you need me. what network owns the travel channel? Is that is that <laughs> uh, Sean's job? Do they uh, own it? I don't know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this discovery. Can we reach out to Josh no, Gates? Either. Doesn't he own that channel? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. He does. Well, um, <laughs> yeah, you remember Art Bell? Yeah, uh, Art Bell. Coast to coast, yeah. Actually, okay, so that actually brings me to like... <laughs> you the, the Rockies, so, you're on the air. Yeah, with yeah. Art Bell. <laughs> I remember like tuning into that by accident, uh-huh. you know, like driving home. I used to work at night shift. You'd mm-hmm. drive home and you hear like Art Bell and be like, what the hell is this? Um, so Chris Carter is the guy who invented the X Files, mm-hmm. right? And as far as I know, like that basically, like now, like that, you know, he's living off X Files money. Um, he him. was a surfer who was inspired by seventies TV show Kolchak the Night Stalker. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah! Okay, have you ever seen that? Yeah, With it's Mary good. McGavin? Yeah, but the, okay. So the vibe of Kolchak mm-hmm. was a he was a newspaper reporter who would always seem to investigate paranormal activity Mm -hmm. you know or you know whatever the vampire Mm -hmm. or the devil dog or you know whatever every every uh episode they brought that back for a period of time with um what's his name Stuart uh charlie's throne uh queen of the damned uh, yeah yeah Stuart townsend townsend yeah yeah he was the kolchak in like the 2000s or something oh did they like reboot it yeah it was just called the night stalker yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so anyway, uh, Chris Carter, he made, so he created the X-Files. Um, another side note, Darren McGavin, who was the star of Kolchak was later, he was in a couple of episodes of the, of, uh, the X-Files mm-hmm. and a reoccurring character, but he also created, um, Millennium, which starred Lance Henriksen. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. As Frank Black, right? <laughs> uh, Art Bell. Was on that show. There was an really? episode. I think. It, I think it was a Millennium episode. I don't think it was an X Files episode that had Art Bell on it. Yeah, and uh, he also created a show called Harsh Realm, which nobody saw. It, it wasn't very good. It was a virtual reality. Uh, you know, some guy get, ends up in a virtual re- <laughs> virtual reality world and the Lone Gunman. But that was uh, basically Chris Carter's claim to fame. He didn't direct this movie, mm-hmm. um, but I want to say that he maybe directed. The sequel, the big screen sequel mm. that I want to believe. And then yeah. I, he directed several episodes. He would direct episodes of the show. What about the reboot when it came out? He back? directed a lot okay. of the, the mm-hmm. reboot. when Yeah, because that's the weirdest thing about the X-Files. It has like this strange... It keeps coming back. And uh, <laughs> I guess... Um, we keep believing. Yes. Well, Gillian Anderson is saying she's done playing Dana Scully I, like, for I all time. I can't blame her. It's uh, been yeah. how much of her life at this point? You yeah. Know, 30 years of her life, half her life. And she's... She's so much more than this show. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a great character. I was it like, is. <laughs> it's a good character, but it's very... Is, is she always this damselly? Is she always getting yeah. rescued no. by Fox Mulder? No. That, see, that's I a, feel like I see that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a thing I think, like, I guess I get, when we get yeah. to the end of the movie, we'll have to talk about, like, I, like watching it tonight, I'm like, okay, I see why they're doing it, but it still is kind of disappointing yeah. mm-hmm. that she's I know. I was sitting here watching it. I'm like, I remember her being a stronger character. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she is sidelined. Well, yeah, quite at the a bit beginning, she's, uh, don't think, just make yeah. it happen, you yeah. know, and all this. Um, 
So yeah, it's Jillian Anderson and David Duchovny. Um, Noted sex addict, David Duchovny. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, because he went to treatment. Yep. He was in that show, Californication. Yep, that terrible show. Wow, that show was bad. It was, but I watched it. I, it <laughs> that was some... Uh, High budget trash, that show. It I could sure not was. believe, like, this is all we got for a story. Like, the flimsiest of stories oh, for I a TV show. Yeah, I, I didn't yet, watch it long. But it ran for, like, what, 10 seasons? Oh, that show was time. on for forever. I think what was I, he yeah. in? I remember I he was in uh, Aquarius, which was... Oh, was that, that like, Manson's... Yeah, the Manson, Manson family. Show. Yeah, it show. wasn't yeah. the guy that played Manson in that Renly Baratheon from Game of Thrones. Was it? I'm pretty was sure, it? yeah. Wow. Because that was the time when they were trying to get all the Game of Thrones people onto other things. Yeah. Be like, strike while the iron's hot, and then none of them took off. Like when, sure. Like when, uh, what's his name, was uh, Iron Fist. It was around that same time. Oh. Remember that happened? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. yeah <laughs> they all derailed their careers. Like, Game of Thrones curse is real, man. Do you remember when they tried to make David Duchovny into a movie star? Evolution, e- Ian, or right. Ivan Reitman's Evolution was his first, like I think, I was big like, stream. Was that before yeah. or after the X Files movie? I think it was after the X Files movie. I think X-Files it was after X Files. Yeah. yeah, he was in one of my favorite episodes of Sex in the City ever. That he's is in a, a good fucking one. hilarious. It turns into a curb your enthusiasm episode, That's a great basically. Episode. Yeah, he, what was the the movie where he played like the mob doctor? He was like a <laughs> he was a, a physician who got booted out of, and then like the mob recruited him or whatever. He ended yeah. up. Yeah. He was in the worst movie of 2019, Craft Legacy. Oh, so oh yeah. Well, that's where he's at now. Yeah. Right. And he looked not great in that yeah. movie either. He was looked like he was having a rough time. And I just remember, like, he was the guy, it seemed like, um, you know, behind the scenes seemed like he wanted to get out of being Fox yeah. Mulder the most, you know? It's like, I mean, obviously both of them wanted to do he bigger was, things with their career. He was uh, my first time watching softcore porn. Really? Yeah, mm. because he was on Red Shoe Diaries. Yep. Really? Yes, King's huh? Red Shoe. He, was, he, he was the narrator. He was the narrator <laughs> of the Red Shoe Diaries. And I remember being a little kid and we had a le- illegal cable. Yeah. And I was like, hey, it's David Duchovny. What's this show? And I was like, oh, there's oh, lots of folks and boobies. Yep. Uh, crap, Look that reminds me. He was in The Rapture with uh, Mimi Rogers. Mm. Nice. Which was the movie where they get rapture. Everybody gets rapture except oh. for the sinners. And I want to say like, uh, yeah, uh, oh, it was actually like, a pretty good movie. Michael Tolkien That's wrote a good that movie. It, it was sounds like a movie I watched in Bible school. <laughs> no, but they, I don't think it was we written by. We watched Left a, Behind. No, those no, movies it's not. Are, it's not one of those kind. It's not one of those. No, it's not a, less, no. a message movie. It's a. No, no, it's written by I think like an atheist. Gotcha. But it was you know like none if the, this was real, mm, here's how no. this would. None of the Camerons are in it. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> yeah, keep those keep those people away from the movies. No, it was please. Michael <laughs> Tolkien because he did. Um, he worked with. Didn't he work with um, Robert Downey Jr. A bunch of like uh, you know. Two girls and a guy, and yeah. you know, that kind of stuff was, uh, yeah, I think. I think my you're memory right. might be failing me here, but back from the video store. Anyway, mm-hmm. the X Files. So, X-Files. most of the X Files, I guess, if you're remembering them, as Michaela said, they were scary because they were um, Monster of the Week mm-hmm. episodes. Yeah, for sure. But the mythology episodes were always, usually the first and the last, and maybe the two part, um, you know, mid season, mm-hmm. uh, you know, sweeps, uh, sure. episodes yeah. where they would kind of tie all this stuff in, but you were always kind of seeing it from like, what is this black oil that they've discovered? And like, you know, there's this conspiracy and there's this syndicate of well-dressed gentlemen, uh, who meet in dark rooms and stuff like this. And so you were never really sure exactly where it was going. And I guess the movie version was going to be like, okay, we're going to spell it out to, for you. Here's what's been going on through like the first five years of of the show. Because this is halfway through its run, right? Yeah. Okay. That's an interesting point to make a movie, I think. Because I feel like movies, maybe this is a nowadays thing, are like to tie up loose ends if a show got canceled early or if like the fans demanded a better ending, you know, like... Like Serenity for Firefly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that was another one. Like I had a similar, maybe because there's science fiction, Mm -hmm. um, Serenity... You know, when you watch it, you're like, oh, this is actually telling you like the whole the background of where the show, right. the world the show was taking place mm-hmm. in. It's like this actually is a feature film mm-hmm. version of this. Right. It's like right. it's bigger in scope. And I guess that's what they're trying here. I know later there's like the Sex in the City movie. There's two of them. Yeah. Were those? Yeah. 
Two it was also miniseries. produced by Fox. Is Fox like the one who That's like HBO. We're, we're gonna yeah. make a Simpsons? Yeah, but who's the production Simpsons. company? Yeah, it? was it HBO? Movie. And the Simpsons movie was Fox. Yep. Yeah. Um. So sure all right. there's other ones. <laughs> so I guess it's like okay, we got we got a budget. There's an audience. Uh, we're gonna make an X Files movie for the big screen, and mm-hmm. that means that we're gonna be widescreen. Uh, characters can say shit. Yeah. Um, you have uh, um, better lighting. Well, I see. But that's the thing. Like the X-Files had like a lighting scheme, if you remember, which yeah. was like shadow and darkness and very yes. 90s. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you go into a room and there's no lights anywhere. It was mm-hmm. the 90s. So if there was reruns on during the day, you didn't know what was happening. Yep, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Everybody's walking it's just in with like desk lights. lamps. Yep. That's like w- one little desk lamp is lighting this whole room. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Nokia phones. Yes, uh, the bricks thing. that could survive being run over by a semi, yeah. But, you know, coming uh, thinking about that is like the X-Files wouldn't even be possible without the the, the invention of the cell phone. Yeah. Right? Because <laughs> it had to be like around that time. We're not mm-hmm. talking iPhones here. This is like Nokia's they're using uh, back yeah. in the day to communicate well, with each other. this is 98 and this is mid midway through. So like early seasons, what do they use? Like the big car phones? I don't, I don't know. know. It was or still cell phones. They walkie talkies. They were cell phones from like day one. And I, yeah. when did the show start? Was it? Mm-hmm. Now it seems like it was like ninety one or something. They had like like a Zach Morris. I was going to say like yeah. the big Zach <laughs> yeah. Morris like World War Two walkie talkies. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so twenty minutes into this, mm. you're going what? So the X Files movie. All right, so we're yeah. setting the scene because this is going to be like the big, big, big scope. What's happening yeah. in? The conspiracy of the show. And yeah. that's the other thing that was like big in the 90s. Still big. Now it's kind of scary. But in the yep. 90s, it was fun conspiracies. I the, miss the, when they were fun. <laughs> the men in black and the black helicopters. Mm-hmm. And the and I forgot like the crop circles. Yeah. Crop circles. Oh, crop so, circles. So innocent. Yeah. <laughs> what an innocent thing. Crop circles. Oh like gosh. I know it does destroys crops and isn't good financially. But like in the grand scheme of conspiracy uh, theories that we're at now in 2023 crop circles are pretty wholesome like, right crop circles yeah. um but no like the the beginning of this it may it totally brought me back i forgot that the x-files usually had like a big creepy cold open like that mm-hmm. like the beginning of this is scary it's like jarring it was really scary it's really scary fucking caveman you versus know. alien <laughs> Yeah, but see, yeah. I guess that's expected because uh, unexpected. In a battle royale. <laughs> you don't expect an X Files movie to start in thirty five thousand BC, yeah, right? No, that threw me. Yeah, in yeah. Texas, where it's an ice age. Yeah, yeah. And cavemen mm-hmm. discover are they tracking an alien creature? Mm-hmm. And I think that's the other thing in the show. It always made the distinction that, like, I think you were always supposed to get the idea that, like. No one actually saw an alien, if I'm remembering this correctly. It was always like, you know, somebody would see it, but it wouldn't be Mulder or Scully, mm-hmm. you know, like, or it would be Mulder's interpretation of events, but you never actually, because there were aliens in seen in the show, but mm-hmm. I don't think they were ever like, you know, hey, there's one right there, unless it was yeah. on an operating no, table or something. No, this is right something. out the gate, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so here we've got, okay, there's alien creatures in this, slimy, you know, things that uh, attack these um, uh, cavemen, mm-hmm. and they bleed this black blood, which we've seen from the show, but this is going to explain what it is. So then we cut to the present day, and Lucas Black, the star of Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift... <laughs> <laughs> Which Colin knew right off the top. Right away. Colin's yeah. a Tokyo Drift head. Yeah. I don't remember how I remember. Like when I saw Tokyo Drift, I'm like, that kid looks familiar because I was a fan of this movie. And I'm I like, oh, it's him all growing up. I'm still like, I don't know who this dude is. Yeah, he's been in Jarhead and uh, Friday that, Night Lights <laughs> and Lucas Black. He's a little kid in this and uh, he falls down a hole. And gets because, infected. you know, you're just out with your friends digging holes for fun. Yeah, well, I guess. What are you going to do in Texas? Yeah. Yeah. But this looks like the Dust Bowl, the way, they, the way it's shot in the way like these kids act yeah it feels like the great depression and he gets infected by the black uh oil which Mm -hmm. then takes him over as we've seen in the show it like you know covers your eyes and makes them go black and so what is the black oil i guess like and and maybe this is the the mystery that's trying to that the movie is uh playing with right Mm -hmm. because eventually Mueller and scully are going to have to investigate this right but what is it alien slugs and what does it do? It um, it turns you into like a jello. 
Yeah, it it starts to like. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> did you get infected by this? I, yeah, yeah, I think I did. Yeah. Um, no, like once once these like little slug like parasite things invade a body, the body starts to like gel and it starts to like break down into mm-hmm. this like gelatinous blob where it becomes like a host cocoon to create the or to bring these aliens are about. It's yeah. all very gooey. It's very yeah. gooey. J- jelly, yeah. jelly like sticky. Yeah, it's kind of gross. It's, it's very gross. Yeah. But I think that's it. There is so all the action that's taking place is because the syndicate, mm-hmm. right, which has been working throughout the course of five seasons of the show in concert with these alien colonists, right? Where at some point there's going to be a planned event and FEMA, the secret government, I love that, Mm -hmm. is going to take over uh, and, you know, it's going to be a holiday. And then, you know, they're going to, they're going to declare a national emergency and FEMA, the secret government is going to take over. Uh, And that's when colonization will begin because Mm -hmm. this has been dictated by the alien, uh, uh, occupiers and it's uh, the the syndicate has been working with the, mm-hmm. them for fifty years, um, but this is something they don't know about because it grows an alien inside of people, and that means they we've been lied to this whole time, and it's actually going to kill us all. We're not mm-hmm. going to be mindless parasites. It's going to kill us all. Shocking. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, Mulder and Scully. Agents of the FBI. Mm-hmm. Do we know uh, both of their first names? Fox mm-hmm. and Dana. There you go. All yeah. right. And Woo! they are, uh, so the X-Files has been shut down at the end of season five. Mm-hmm. And so that's where we are finding ourselves here in the beginning of this movie. Right, because the truth's not out there. Yeah. So where are Close they? It up. We found all the truths. Yep, yep. we found them all. <laughs> How are we introduced them? Because this is important when you're doing a feature film version of yeah. your show. You have to reintroduce your characters. Yeah, they're just standard FBI windbreakers. Yep. Just like every other FBI agent. And they're just checking out a building looking for a bomb. Mm-hmm. Bomb like, threat in Texas. Yeah, like you do. Yep. But it turns out this is a cover up because we have to blow up the building that has the bodies of the little boy and the infected little boy and the firefighters who went to save him. Mm-hmm. Um, you would think there'd be like a, a less less dramatic way to yeah. cover up this evidence. Yeah. They did say $45 million in damage. That's a big way to go about this like yeah. couldn't you just like it's breaking bad money. dissolve them in acid or something like that you know something yeah, just steal them yeah just because let me get this straight so basically what happened was fema has offices in the building next door to the federal building and so they brought the bodies there mm-hmm. and now um what was happening with fema at this time why are we making them uh, nothing the, which is okay. why it was kind of like ahead of its time a little bit like why yeah. are we making them a villain right now yeah, no, it was, yeah. Uh, katrina hasn't happened yet right. yeah. No. yeah yeah no okay. so they were yeah. just kind of like you know like yeah, well, this is harmless if right. we it's like say yeah. fema is well the- it's oh it's funny too is because like the whole fema crop virus part of this movie is not unlike a stupid movie I saw last year, the Jurassic World movie, whatever fuck around that was called. Dominion. Whatever. I yeah. Jerk off. I don't know. <laughs> you tell me. Jurassic World jerk off for all I care. It's, <laughs> that was about like locusts that were genetically modified to eat certain crops and not eat either yeah. others. And I'm like, what? Well, they knocked off this fucking X-Files. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was even in the show. There was yeah. always like the bees and stuff like yeah. that in the show. But you never knew exactly what was happening and the clones. But that the belongs in my x files it doesn't belong in my right. jurassic world movie no yeah, you know not, your worlds are your colliding yeah. for no reason movie. yeah, so yeah. The next jurassic world's worlds collide <laughs> jurassic world copyrighted Jur- jurassic worlds collide jurassic oh, worlds collide fucking yeah. hell. i'm done <laughs> copyright 2023 it, saturday night they're just show. gonna copy the star wars method of being like well now there's two jurassic worlds yeah. right like there's two yeah. death stars you know now there's well, yeah, two jurassic worlds. like well we've already yeah. done the two dinosaurs what yeah. can we do now i yeah. kind of want to go, somebody to go back to the past when dinosaurs were okay and volcanoes and like stuff, yeah. st- I, colin, oh, colin, oh, colin i have a movie know, for you oh. there's a colin i have a movie for you it's called 65 it's coming out oh, like yeah. next week so yeah, 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 there you go <laughs> i mean this, I mean, this is this is what's happening now. The Jurassic Worlds. So we're having a multiverse dinosaur. Yeah. Oh, it's happening. God damn it! It's happening. No, don't you take it back. It's happening. Take it back. They're gonna <laughs> do it now. 
Oh, damn man. right they're going to do it. God damn it. Didn't Harry, did Michael Crichton, what timeline? Did they go back to the Jurassic? And Congo. Congo is going to okay. come into this universe too, right? That's part of the multiverse. I mean, it's let's the Crichton verse. I mean, yes. let's get weird with it. Let's yeah. do it. You know, I'm in. It's the Crichton verse. <laughs> um, but it turns out that there's a bomb in the wrong building in a soda machine. Mulder finds it. Uh, Terry O'Quinn's in this movie. That's the stepfather. Bomb. It's a massive bomb. Well, yeah. 45 million in damages. Yeah. Yeah. It blows up the yeah. building. Very reminiscent of the Oklahoma City Which, bombing. Ooh, this feels a little. Too soon? What was that, 96 or 95? Yeah, or that's like quick. That, that yeah. means they were filming this like right after that happened. I remember, like I was saying, I remember at 90s. the time that the movie came out, like that was on, you know, the, they. I think they were doing the design of the blast of that building, you know, yeah. it looked kind of like uh, uh, the Oklahoma City bombing. That was the first like national tragedy I remember. That was yeah, a big one, that, yeah. That I mean, was the first one, yeah. Because I also remember, like, at some point, somebody did try to blow up the World Trade Center by yep. parking a bomb the, with a, the van a bus in the with basement? a van, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. van with a bomb in it mm-hmm. in the basement. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, Terry O'Quinn uh, later uh, lost, right? He was in Lost and became, like, a recognizable, but he was a stepfather before this, obviously. Um, he's an FBI agent who, it turns out, has no intention of disarming the bomb because he's in cahoots, right? <gasps> with What? The government, the no. secret shadow government that runs FEMA, the, the global worldwide the conspiracy. The Knights Templar, because that's what it felt the like. The syndicate, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, like. The cigarette smoking man is also a part of this uh, conspiracy. He was in a lot of the episodes of the TV show. Did you ever see those? Wait, which one? No, the, the guy in the like trench coat with the that kept smoking. Yeah, I guess. yeah. He was just known <laughs> yeah. As CSM, the oh. cigarette smoking man. William B. Davis was the actor who played him, and apparently, Will B. The, Davis. The way that I heard it, like he was, um, uh, I don't even remember if he was an that. actor. <laughs> he was, you know, like he was in the first episode, and he was just supposed to be like the, you know, the the, the threatening figure in the back of sure, the room that sure. smokes cigarettes. But uh, his presence was so much that he then ended up in a bunch of episodes of the show became like a primary antagonist representative of the syndicate. Basically he was always like the shadowy agent, you know, who would like a fucking Jalo movie. (laughs) In what way? Like, what do you mean? Like, like the mysterious, uh, like smoking shadow man. That seems like a very Jalo thing. Yeah. He was always like the, uh, well, later they demystify the devil. See, this is what happens when, like, after a show kind of runs out of its, uh, you know, it's like you have that sexual tension, and once you release it, the show kind of goes, you know. Right, once uh, Jim and Pam got together. Yeah. 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 Or David and Maddie and Moonlighting. Mm-hmm. Okay. I remember yep. Moonlighting. Okay. Yep. Um, but they also ended up, like, giving a whole backstory to the, the cigarette smoking man, and we got, like, mm. his full name, and he has a kid and an ex-wife. Oh, and, oh yeah. I don't care about I any of that. Yeah. See, it's it's this is what I'm talking about. It's this bullshit giving people backstories. It's like the popularity with giving villains backstories right now. Yeah, I, I hate, hate it. it. Don't I, need to know everything. I don't need to know where the Joker came from. Yep. Don't need to know. Yeah. He's just a Joker. Yeah. I just need a faceless villain. That's all I, I need. don't need origin stories don't need for it. everything. Don't need it. Yeah. I know, because it kind of got, like, I mean, I guess that was the problem with the show, like, as it kept going on, mm-hmm. you know, it was like it had to keep explaining uh, you know, expanding the mythology beyond this like general alien invasion mm-hmm. concept, right. and so then it kept like you know, I don't know, just it, it, and then you know, then Duchovny also mm-hmm. uh trying to pursue his movie career like would leave mm-hmm. for long periods yeah. of time, leaving uh you know Gillian Anderson basically alone, mm-hmm. and so then they brought in um. It was John Doggett and oh, Monica yeah. Reyes. It was uh, I forgot about that. The T one thousand himself. Yeah, I totally forgot about that. That seems Robert unfair. Patrick. Yes. And uh, what was the woman's name? It was uh, ah, damn. I remember her character's name. It okay. seems unfair to Jillian Anderson to be like, "I'm going to go off and do movies. You hold down the fort." Yeah. Like, with these fillings, okay, but- new characters. But Return to Me was really good. <laughs> with David Duchovny and Minnie Driver. It was a great movie. Yeah? Yeah. I didn't see that one. Well, I've not seen it. Yeah. yeah it's there a you go. But it's a good one. God damn it. So Robert these... Walsh isn't in. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, well, now you. I'm interested. <laughs> so these agents 
are then like swept into a conspiracy by Martin Landau, who shows up in this movie. He sure does. Wasn't expecting that. Yeah. No? No. No. Wasn't expecting that. Uh, Big name that they kind of were able to bring in. Well, there's a lot of like uh, char- supporting characters that you would recognize from other stuff in this movie that they kind of just like, uh, you know, because it's a feature film version, I guess. Mm-hmm. You got, uh, was it Glenn Headley? From uh, Dirty Rotten and Scoundrels Dick Tracy, yeah. mm-hmm. and Dick Tracy, yeah. um, we she, had... rest, she just died last year. Oh, did she? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's very sad. Very yeah. sad. Uh, Blith, Blythe, Blith Danner, Blythe Danner, Blythe Danner. Blythe Danner. Yeah. Yeah. which isn't she? Is she re- isn't Gwyneth she related Paltrow's to mom? Oh, yep. that's okay. Mm-hmm. I thought she was related to somebody else too, but no, that's what I'm thinking of. Never mm-hmm. mind. Yep. And Armin Mueller Stahl, who we were trying to determine exactly what did he win the Academy Award for Best Supporting Ever? Not sure. Shine, I think. Mm-hmm. And then he was in Angels and Demons and several other things. But anyway, they drop by for cameo appearances. Yeah. Or not, they have roles, I guess. Yeah. But Martin Landau's got the biggest one. That's like, he kind of adds his gravitas to it uh, as a insider with the syndicate who is giving Mulder kind of like the backdoor information mm-hmm. on the alien conspiracy. Um, Did they make that character a gynecologist just so Mulder could make a pelvic exam joke? Yeah, what was the point? Or is it just like easy to set him up as being a pedo too? Remember, you know how like oh, like I true. guess it's really it's a short walk from gynecologist to pedophile. Unfortunately, yeah. you know? ouch! It's all the gynecologists out there and the women who see them. Uh, I'm just saying it's it's a lot easier to accuse them of something inappropriate just given that's their true. job. Yeah, because that's know? what. The gist well, of the movie they, is is that wouldn't they be like a pediatrician? That'd be yeah, yeah easier you, to you right? think, yeah I don't know. yeah that's, actually I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah now that you're that it does make more sense yeah mm-hmm. um, that's why I'm like it was it just for the pelvic joke yeah I think it might kind of feels like it. Well, Mulder makes a bunch of that whole scene. He, he has he really has weird. like dry humor. Well, the scene in question, he's uh uh they're trying to. I think it's the the government's trying to discredit him mm-hmm. because he knows yes. too much, and so he gets accused of. Various crimes. Yeah, why did, yeah. But why did this assault. conversation have to take place while they're both peeing in an alley? Did that one take place while they were in the? the that was first, in the that's other. That's like alley. their first meeting. That's their first meeting. That was while he was peeing on the yeah. Independence Day. Yes, but uh, like, poster. and then he comes. But then we see the guy come out and have a whole full talk, pull his pants down, and yeah. pee too. Why did this have to happen this way? Didn't did not care for this. Yeah. They, they both get to pee on yeah, the Independence like, Day. I don't know poster. men's room etiquette, but I feel like this is frowned upon. No, you gotta pee. You're outside. Make a conversation while you're peeing next to a man um, that you don't know a stranger. I think, okay, so generally, I think the the etiquette is here. You go. If you're in a restroom, for sure, uh, you kind of treat it like you're in an elevator, and you just you stare don't right talk. ahead. Yeah. Mind um, your business. Yeah. Outdoors, you don't walk in front of uh, somebody who's sure. Uh, sure. You know, I don't know if you're shoulder to shoulder, if you're supposed to have a conversation or not. I've never been in that situation. I, I mean, would prefer not to. Sure. Yeah. I yeah. feel like at that point, it's just. I just, I don't want anybody talking to me while I'm in the bath, using the bathroom, no. let alone a stranger coming no, up and I trying to like that. talk to me about government conspiracies. Like, okay, if this, if I was David Duchovny, I'd be like, oh God, like, here we go. The local vagrant's going to come and hassle <laughs> me. Like, you know, that would have been my attitude. But he's a well dressed man and he knows his father he's because his father man. was part of the, the, the project. <laughs> um, Martin Landau, by the way, we have to say, we're putting him on the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame. Thanks to MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame, who researched this for us. But can you identify the two other movies that we watched with Martin Landau? Uh, uh, Without warning? Yes. I was going to say that one warning. Yeah, yeah, where he went on his own movie, his side of a movie. Um, I don't know the other one. Uh, (laughs) Alone in the Dark. Oh! I remember he got, he was one of the loonies who got uh, oh the movie that won't die. Jesus. Yeah. So there you go. Welcome, uh, Martin Landau, post I made this happen, you yeah. guys. <laughs> I'm going to send you a certificate and thank you for appearing on our show three times. Uh, we also put somebody else on the wall of fame for this movie. Um, you may or may not recognize him, but it's, uh, hold on a second here. It is Michael Seamus Wiles. And you're like, who? Okay, so during this the course of this movie, uh-huh. there is a operative, I would say, for the syndicate, who is, I think, okay. the guy who sets the bomb in the soda machine at the beginning. Sure. Mm-hmm. He sure. is the guy on the fire escape yeah. overhearing the 
conversation between Martin Landau he's like and the syndicate hitman. Yes, because he's yeah. the one who takes Scully away in the ambulance yeah. at the end. And then I he think does. it's at the Antarctic base. He takes out the trash. Yeah. Yes. So um, he's called the black haired man in this. He, There's like okay. the well dressed man, he the didn't, he had silver cigarette hair. smoking man. Mm-hmm. Well, he's he, called the black haired well, man. He had gray hair, so that's a lie. He was the uh, bartender in Fight Club. Oh, we okay. did Fight Club. I think he has a in line. History, I guess. We did Fight Club a long time ago and Lords of Salem. Oh, okay. Where he played a, char- a character named Jarrett Perkins, who I confess I do not recall. But thank you, sure. MF Mad Hallway, yeah. for pointing that out. Um, Welcome to the hallway. <laughs> all right. So global conspiracy going on here. Mulder and Scully racing around the country and the globe. They always mm-hmm. seem to have a meeting in Washington that they have to get to in 11 hours, but somehow are able to jet off to Texas. Is, is it, it private jets? I was going to say, is it yeah. a private plane? Yeah. Because there's no way that... Because they go to London, they go to yeah. Texas, they go to Antarctica, they go all over. In I don't think they went to London. Did they? Somebody no. Went, the no, went okay, to the Syndicate. That okay. was like the Knights Templar gotcha. headquarters yep. bullshit. But they do seem to... And then you wonder, like, who's paying for this? Is this on... Yeah. They have, like, an open credit card. They right. have an expense they report with the FBI. Can you imagine the expense out? report for this shit? Like, oh one snowcat and all the gas for it? Like... Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, a flight to Antarctica can't be cheap. Right. I mean, do you have to say why you're going? When you're at that level, you just flash the badge and you're like, no, it's government business. And you're like, I need a plane ticket to I maybe. Yes. But then they still have to like go through the airport. And I just don't see that happening. Like, it just, it's got to be a private plane, right? Yeah. I don't know. It's possible that uh, Director Skinner, which is played by Mitch Pileggi, Right, who we would know from Shocker. Oh, okay. right? oh. yeah. So many things. Um, being but you don't remember he was Horace Pinker in Shocker. He's their like boss. Shocker. I know. Oh, I did not like okay. that movie. So many things being said right now. <laughs> yeah, uh, but he's their boss. He's uh, mm-hmm. Walter Skinner, and maybe he's signing off on it because he's si- kind of sympathetic to their cause, even though he's like, you know, mm-hmm. I know you get results, but it's just it's just so funny to me thinking about like the paperwork and the expenses and everything involved. Cause I'm like, like at my job, I'm the person that has to like reallocate the like credit card mm-hmm. uses with like receipts and stuff. So I'm like, is there someone doing that for Agent yeah. Mulder? It's like yeah. there's, there's some, there has to be it's like, we only budgeted him one snow cat yeah. and he bought two. There's God damn po- it. Some poor woman who's sitting there like, I don't know which budget line to take this. From. <laughs> yeah. What the yeah. Fuck. But that's what I'm saying. It has to be his boss that actually yeah. signs off on that, right? right? I mean, like, otherwise, yeah. I mean, because yeah. they're they're doing all. I mean, imagine the phone bill, I, right? Mm-hmm. I just, right. I'm just sitting here thinking about like my budgets and being like, do I take the snowcat from the in-state expenses or out of state? <laughs> right. We don't have the funding. But it, there. I don't know what Antarctica goes under. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, I don't have an Excel it's line for Antarctica. Outside the United yeah. States. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be honest. Antarctica freaks me out. Yeah, because like, there's nothing there. Yeah. There is stuff there. When he's but. driving that snowcat and his gas is getting low, I about had a panic attack. Oh, my God. I can't no. go. I could never go to Antarctica. Not that I would ever would get the opportunity to, but, like, I just just knowing how isolated you are and how there's absolutely nothing there and, like, we've all agreed as, like, a society, a cultural global society to not do anything with it. Yeah. There's dark energy around and Antarctica. I don't like it. And then it's scary when you find out that this was filmed in Canada and you're like, well, this <laughs> abyss is even closer. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, God, is <laughs> that desolate up there? My yeah. God. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Because I guess that's the thing that the show, that the movie can do that the show couldn't do, which we, I was commenting on during the movie. There is like that kind of, um, I don't know what it's like a psychological effect of uh, when you actually see someone and you can tell that they're there in this mm-hmm. location. There are these like big sweeping landscape shots where like you'll see this beautiful mountain range and the camera will like pan around and then like Mulder's yeah like climbing up a like mm-hmm. rock ledge right in the center of the frame and it's you know what, yeah, it's gorgeous. what always gets me is especially in in this case we're seeing you know Mulder driving the snow cat mm-hmm. I always look for the tire marks yeah because like you can only do that once to yeah. get those tire marks yeah. just right you can't mm-hmm. do that multiple times right and you can't take the crew down there either right. it's yeah, like exactly. that's yeah. where we're gonna shoot it we got to fly you yep. all the way to the, I mean, you imagine the resources and the budget yeah. that it has to actually mm-hmm. take to do this. 
that now, you know, it's like they don't even think about no, it. No, it'd just, be a warehouse in Atlanta, you yeah. know, like mm-hmm. it'd I mean, all be green screen. And granted, well, and they don't even have to green screen. Where you see that what they do shit. with the yeah, yeah, with the Mandalorian, yeah. where you can create the whole environment there and right. it's 3D tracked and all that mm-hmm. stuff. Granted, that stuff does look convincing. It does, it does. But really it kind of awesome. does like uh, you can you still there's uh, you feel it, uh, you know, when you actually see some of these shots in this. Well, movie. yeah, I mean, Colin, you you just recently watched Quantum Mania and all. All I hear about that movie is that it, this, the effects are terrible and unfinished. It like, feels claustrophobic mm-hmm. all the time. You're always aware. Does that, it like, feel real at all? No, like, no, no. Yeah. You're like, this, well, I mean, yeah. with the landscape that it takes place in. Right. Is, you know, right. Yeah. But yeah, it always feels like they're walking around in a very sterile, very small mm-hmm. environment. And mm-hmm. the rest of it's all just painted. But in. like, great example. We just watched Significant Other. Yeah. And that's all outdoors and like the wilderness of Oregon and wherever mm-hmm. else. And like, you can feel that. You feel yeah. that it's really there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So kudos again to yes. uh, actually, I mean, they wouldn't even expense it. Uh, like a studio wouldn't expense this anymore. It's no. like, what's the point? You're going to allocate that money somewhere else, mm-hmm. probably to visual effects or whatever. But mm-hmm. I appreciate that this movie actually took people to Canada. It's the money's on, the money's on screen. This is a big budget movie, man. It, it looks sixty five million dollars in ninety eight. Yeah, that's, that's a big movie. That's, that's Clinton dollars, yeah. That's, mm-hmm. and they I were think worth a lot more. <laughs> it made a hundred and eighty nine million. Wow! Wow! Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So what, I don't know if that's global. So I mean, but man, that's. that's but yeah, huge. I mean that means that it was a success. Yeah. Um, all right. So the 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 plot, the conspiracy. Eventually, Mulder and Scully figure out that yep, there was a cover up going on here. We're right. trying to track like, and we've been given direction by uh, Martin Landau, and that mm-hmm. eventually leads us to Texas, where the um, the cave where the the monster has been discovered by Jeffrey DeMunn, who is mm-hmm. later in oh, he's in the Blob, which we watched, mm-hmm. uh, and later in The Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. He's the uh, researcher who is attacked by the creature, mm-hmm. and then um, and as soon as he's attacked, it's like instantly covered up. Yeah, we got to like, cover. He's it up. not even dead yet, and they're like, "Well, let's bury him." And it's just quick, and they assemble the quickest playground of all time. Well, yeah, because the yeah. syndicates <laughs> no freaked kidding. out, right? Because they they're like, "What? Like an hour? Didn't... Yeah." Don't they even say something like, "Oh, they left an hour they left ago." An hour ago. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like they threw that thing together. They quick. put that the fastest playground. But of all like, time. could it be more conspicuous? Like it is the most obvious cover up ever. Like they like this little neighborhood literally is dust. Yeah. Like there's no grass and then, anywhere and else. There's a big sod in And then there's a big <laughs> green patch with a brand new playground right on top in the middle of this desert. Yeah, but they're not expecting anybody to ever come out here. I mean that's like the, thing, the like, locals are like, well, fucking notice that. They're like, like well, we've ca- we've caused a disturbance while we yeah. had to investigate this thing in your backyard. They're paying them off. We're with paying the playground. them off for the playground. But let's let's be realistic though. Sod. Just put rocks down. Yeah, yeah. That gravel. Would more, that would have been yeah. more believable. Pour some gravel, Just man. like those little smooth pebbles that yeah. you can put on playgrounds. Yeah. Yeah. Put that down. Especially in Texas where yeah. we're talking to die. That's, yeah. that's more believable. Eventually, our intrepid heroes end up at a couple of Jiffy Poppers out in the middle of mm-hmm. a cornfield in the desert. What's yep. in the Jiffy Poppers? Bees. Bees. Right? Not the bees. Mm-hmm. Because the bees are transporting the alien virus. Do I have Pollen. this correct? Mm-hmm. They're, right, it's genetically altered pollen. This mm-hmm. is how the conspiratorial geniuses are going to spread the mm-hmm. virus through the virus, which will turn you into an, you will just stay an alien. Mm-hmm. It's going to be spread by these bees. Mm-hmm. But it turns out, behind the alien's back, the syndicate is actually the good guys. We think of, thought they were the bad guys for years, but it's actually, no, they've been working in one hand in concert with them, but on the other hand, they've been developing a vaccine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And they're going to be able to somehow, they're hoping this will help them fight back against mm-hmm. the, they're going to be able to fight the future. Mm-hmm. Oh, you said, you said it. it. You said this it. This part was tough because this is a big, long info dump that just comes in a yeah. really not well constructed large yeah exercise. tell me about this it just feels he's just well, like it, it set the scene for the, the uh, folks this i don't remember what this guy's name i think is. it's the well-dressed man the, okay that guy is in the back seat of this car with Mulder and is basically like doing the like evil villain unveiling his plan Massive thing exposition yeah. but it just yeah. it is the it is a very long car ride and he's talking the whole time this car ride and it's just like this is really the best way you could deliver this information. There was, you know, like I felt like the text could have been massaged a little bit because it was kind of mm-hmm. clunky. It, it, it brings the movie to a stop a little bit. Yeah. 
you know, and then actually there might be because we watched the extended cut. I think actually there might be a scene or two in there. There but, it is. But, there it is. Oh, it was the stuff involving his sister. I think they deleted from the movie gotcha. that they added back to say like about his sister being a you know yeah, that was I didn't a, need that. Yeah, because yeah, that was more you know deep cut stuff yeah, for the right. fans didn't of the television it. show. Um, I forgot where I was going to go with that because mm-hmm. it's something to do with like well that is basically the dump in the conspiracy. Mm-hmm. When we first met, you're saying about this dialogue scene, mm-hmm. we first meet Mulder and Scully mm-hmm. introduced in this movie. They start talking and it's, you know, uh, the, 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 the cadence of their dialogue, the amount of stuff that they have to say immediately took me back to the show. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember they talk like this. They monologue everybody, at each other. Yeah. Everybody talks like this yes. on the X-Files. Yeah. Um, cause I guess, you know, they're the ones that were written by, uh, mm-hmm. Chris Carter. Um, so the Jiffy pop, uh, uh, a big Beehives. science experiment <laughs> yeah. that's going on, they are able to escape from, and that leads to, uh, the sexual tension moment mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. the movie. Now fans of the television show had been shipping, uh, Mulder and Scully. Is this the first shipping? Is this the first official shipping you think in like Amer- like American pop culture? Hmm. Well, I well Sam and Diane, yeah, yeah, that's probably the first yeah. one. And and David and Maddie, and that's what I keep yeah. going back to in Moonlighting. But I yeah. don't know. You're saying fan fiction? I know. I'm just saying, like, where the audience really, really was. Oh no! Like no. hanging on this yeah. to happen. <laughs> I think like a lot of those TV shows, like you said, always had, mm-hmm. you know, because they would they would draw it out. You know, it's like will they or won't they? Was mm-hmm. the whole big thing, right? And so the feature film version, I remember it was even teased in the trailer. Like, they might actually, like, get a hot kiss going on here. <laughs> but be interrupted. Mm-hmm. Uh, what Scully, timing? It's been yeah. riding under her collar all day long. Yeah, I know. All the way from Texas yep. and through a, a Senate committee hearing or whatever. Yep. Because um, they're always going back to the, the, the committee where they have to explain, like, what the hell they well, I t- did. I did like that part, though, because she was like, well, what do you got? She's like, well, bees and corn. Yeah. She was yeah. like, hmm. Yeah, we don't really deal with that in the FBI. That doesn't fall under the jurisdiction of terrorism. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's like farming. <laughs> um, but Scully does get stung by the bee. And then mm-hmm. I like the fact that because she's a doctor, she can explain like her I symptoms. I hated and, that. Yeah? I absolutely hate yeah, that. My pulse I is I didn't like that either. My, yeah. She's literally like I'm losing motor function. saying her symptoms out loud. And I was like, you can fuck her right Why off. didn't no. she just say, <laughs> I'm going into anaphylactic shock? Instead of saying all of her symptoms, well, because she's all like she should, she's not allergic to anything. So she's sitting there. He's saying that, mm-hmm. you know, and she's like, "I'm not allergic to anything." So that means mm-hmm. it's a different cause. There's something else wrong. Yeah, I didn't need a narration of all of her symptoms. That was annoying. It just doesn't like th- this. <laughs> is kind of it, it. gets bothers me about this X Files. Yeah. This stuff too is like people don't talk like this. You know no. what I'm saying? Like this no. is not a way people talk, and it does feel unnatural and stilted. Yeah. And I don't like it. All she needed to say yeah. was, "I don't know what's happening." Call an ambulance. Yeah. Oh, see, I liked it just because it was not. it was on character for her. I guess like you expect the doctor, they're gonna because you know people in the medical they do like will tell you stuff that you're like okay it, in English though, but they're like, no, this I, is actually no, what but it like is. if it's actually happening to them, I don't think they're gonna do that. I it, think they're gonna say. Call an ambulance. It felt like it felt like have you, data. how many doctors have like done this in front of you, mm-hmm. Colin? It felt like something data on Star Trek would do. Like I could totally hear him like rattling off stuff happening to him and he's a fucking robot. Like yeah, it just doesn't it seriously. just seriously. Well, she falls into anaphylactic shock and is taken away by the sinister henchman. Mm-hmm. To where? Antarctica. That's right. Where she is uh gonna become a she's going to gestate this thing. This yeah, is done because be the syndicate alien cocoon. Right. I feel like the thing remake movie ripped this off a lot. Oh, it was major thingy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but like the remake, like you remember that whole end scene? She goes inside the ship. Yep. Uh-huh. That looked a lot like this, yep. even really in the design did. of the ship. It and I'm really like, did. man, people were really just taken from X Files left and right, weren't they? Well, to be 
yes. fair, <laughs> and I think we did it on this show maybe years ago. There was a movie with Charlie Sheen called The Arrival. Yeah, I was there for that. Yeah. We, we did it. We were both here. Yeah. I think that predates yeah. this, but it had a similar ending, mm-hmm. right? With he finds like the big That's giant. True. Yeah. 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 That movie got weird. That yeah. got real weird. Mm-hmm. I think they They're actually backwards knees. Yep. 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 <laughs> I remember yep. that. Um, but I think they kept the budget on this relatively. Uh, you know, we're saying sixty-five million is nothing to, to sneeze at, right. but that's less than what I guess it should have cost because it's a Fox movie, and I do think they actually reused uh, sets from Independence Day. It was, no. I think that's what they they still had some of those in storage, and it was like, well, we got we got alien stuff over here from Independence Day, and so they reconfigured it, repainted mm. it. And that became the alien, uh, at least for the close up, you know, when you're in yeah. hallways and stuff like that. Even though, like, recycle. even oh, the yeah. way he goes in and climbs down the ship and slides down into it, that looked a lot like Mary Elizabeth Winstead mm-hmm. in the Thing remake. I was like, hmm, they really just copied that homework, mm-hmm. huh? Didn't the Thing remake also have, like, uh, the thing takes off at the end? I can't remember. Big yeah. Big in the ground, the, the ship is uh, I, maybe. No, no, it doesn't because obviously it's there for the, the, oh, yeah, the yeah. John yeah. Carpenter one. Um, with the dog. Yeah, but I remember at the time being kind of impressed with this, you know, like it is, actually is going to show you for the first time in like X-Files history, a real, you know, big yeah. ass, uh, you know, CG, CGI or model, I guess, mm-hmm. uh, alien spaceship taken off at the end of it because Mulder has to go and rescue mm-hmm. Scully and mm-hmm. inject the uh, vaccine yeah. to see if it works. And I was really annoyed off when the he alien like, plan. breaks her out of the ice cocoon. That he's like smashing it right in front of her face. Yeah, yeah. It's like, dude, like, dude, you do break. that down low, mm-hmm. man. Don't break Some it in glasses front of her face. going into her face. Yeah. yeah, she's very cold and naked, and yep, he has naked. to he has to break her out. And then he does give her a lip lock and uh, you know trying to mm-hmm. perform CPR, so it count. doesn't count. Yeah, it doesn't count. But it does. So this is, I guess, the thing where where Scully gets sidelined and is basically Mulder has to rescue her mm-hmm. and. What I was thinking was like for the narrative, because I know like where the show eventually goes. Yes, she does become more like, okay, well, I know that I've experienced things that, you know, Mm -hmm. I can't explain, Mm -hmm. you know, because her thing always was like, you know, the rational skeptic, right? Um, and that's, <coughs> pardon me, I think why they had to bring the Robert Patrick character in, because mm-hmm. then he takes that place. So mm-hmm. Scully's a little more like, well, it might be. And he's like, nah, come on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, now that she's seen some shit, someone's got to be the, the skeptic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So they bring in the other characters. Uh, but I think the point of, because when you're watching the end of the movie, it's like either she's not entirely conscious when she's in the alien spacecraft and not seemingly aware of her surroundings. Mm-hmm. Uh, when the, when the ship is passing over at the end, she's like briefly unconscious, mm-hmm. you know, it's all to basically go like, okay, we have to put her in a situation where, uh, you know, there's real alien stuff happening, mm-hmm. but somehow when we resume the show, she can't be Mulder. Yeah. You know, or the show's over. If you have right. two, you know, Two people who are like, yep, the paranormal. Right. Yeah. See, uh, uh, fringe. Yeah. That it got a little too into the science weeds for me. Like, I just remember a whole episode early on about them explaining how cows are only like 25% genetically different from humans. And mm. there was a whole episode based on that. And I was like, but okay. did you see a similar dynamic? Kind of. I mean, there was less sexual tension, I would say. Like, yeah. Yeah, and I think there's more like third three character. main characters. Yeah, yeah added Walter. Yeah. 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 Which was Joshua really... Jackson was on that show, Holly. He was oh. the lead guy. Oh, He yeah, was yeah. fringe. Yeah. I forgot about yep. that. Mm-hmm. I never yeah. watched it, but I remember being like, on there. Because it was like, that was the closest, like, it, it, to me, that seemed like they were doing the X-Files again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, only Not as fringe cool, science yeah, instead was, of the paranormal. Yeah. Yeah, it was more, it was less interesting stuff than that but they they had saying. their uh well they would have their like their weird event of the week but yeah. they also had a mythology which was that uh like the alternate dimension yeah you know mm-hmm. and then there was uh the walternates right yeah it's, yeah it's, i i gave up on that show pretty quickly i didn't stick, and stick around very stick long with it, unfortunately but a lot of people love it and i thought it was kind of cool but uh mm-hmm. yeah um the x files um well, ultimately, yeah, it ran for several more seasons. There was a big to do about the fact that the first five seasons were shot in Vancouver, mm-hmm. but Duchovny 
got married to Taya Leone mm-hmm. and became, you know, because they were renegotiating these contracts, he was always complaining that, like, Fox wasn't paying him enough. There was always this, like, in the headlines, you know, that, like, they'd sold the syndication rights, but he hadn't been compensated for it. Mm-hmm. He wanted to be something other than, known for something other than Fox Mulder. He wanted to, to relocate the show to Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. So season six forward, the look of the show is very different. I think mm-hmm. the first episode of season six starts with like the sun, you know, on oh, the geez. horizon in, uh, you know, I can't the, remember. Like the intro to Californication, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, we're in Los Angeles. And you think like, well, it puts all the people in Vancouver who've been working on this show for five years, kind of, you know, yep. but whatever. Uh, and it can't be just one guy. I, w- I would yeah. assume, you know, maybe a lot of the maybe the crew wanted to move back home, mm-hmm. um, or the creative team, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then it ran for several more seasons, and then uh, it ended, and then it was followed. And I believe I might be wrong here. I thought it was like 2011. I mean, it was a while mm-hmm. later when we finally heard that there was going to be another X Files movie, and. It's very different. I mean, that one does play like an episode of the TV show. Just the scope of it is gotcha. a lot smaller. Um, and it's kind of like a monster of the week show. or Sorry, episode. Yeah. And then um, the strange thing is, it's like, what uh, uh, you know, was it six years after that? They brought it back again and there, it ran for two seasons on, uh, on TV. And that got mixed reviews right like i remember it being a hot topic at the time but it was they were very short i think there were only six episodes maybe six to eight episodes per season the first one i thought was like oh they're bringing the x-files back and they're gonna wrap this shit up you know but it was like monster of the week you know and then i think they did uh mythology at the beginning and the end but it has changed so much from what has been laid down in the uh the movie because Now, you know, the, the colonization date passed, I think, by the yeah. time they actually aired it. <laughs> you know, so it was like, yeah. well, we have to reconfigure, like, what's actually going on. And We got it the was date kinda... wrong, guys. It's actually <laughs> going to happen in, in, like, five more years. From yeah, now. yeah, it was. It was, like, <laughs> you know, because of this and, you know, whatever. But probably because the of the Mayan events. Calendar. The, yeah, it's like, oh, we just read it wrong. It's actually this year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um yeah, so uh, we talked a little bit about the movie, uh, a lot about the X Files, I mm-hmm. think, and yeah, its mm-hmm. appeal. So now we're going to tell you what we thought of it mm-hmm. by going around the table. But first of all, we're going to read some of your mail, and in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman, and his name is Igor. Bring us the mail, masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. I'd like to see an X-Files episode about Igor. He's very gelatinous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he could make a good up. Monster of the Week. You remember when Burt Reynolds was in an X-Files episode? What? No. He played God. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, my okay. God, I do remember Well, that. now I have to watch the yes! X-Files. <gasps> okay. Yeah, just making sure that the, maybe I should watch the show. I, that one might have been directed by uh, Gillian Anderson. No, she wow, she started directing better. some of them like later on. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, anyway, we should remind the good folks at home how they can participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook, facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show, or Twitter at Sat Freak Show. They can email us Saturday Night Freak Show Yahoo dot com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show about the X Files movie. I'm actually surprised only two people wrote in about it. Yeah. Does that mean that uh, it has a diehard fan base? You, you think? Know? Yeah, it's got a cult following. I think. Right? Are we off the be- the beaten track? Is or this am I old Saturday for saying like? Is this, is it, uh-oh, are we guys? Are we all like the old oldies now? Being like, you kids like that show, right? Like, <laughs> oh shit. Uh, uh, well, Michael Whitaker wrote in and he says, I don't recall if this movie was a hit or not. From my personal opinion, this movie actually succeeded in a lot of ways that studios are still trying to do to this day. It came out in the summer after the season finale. It lined up perfectly with the show and it wasn't too steeped in its own lore for the first timers. And it managed to set up the next season pretty good. This movie was something of history in the making because I remember for the next decade, uh, lots of talk of other projects that would be TV movie hybrids that never got off the ground. Huh. Hmm. But thank God Downton Abbey yeah. made it uh, across the bridge to theatrical. <laughs> yeah, it did. Right. 
I love Downton Abbey. Bob's Burgers got a movie recently, yep. too. Yep. And I heard it didn't need one. Yep. <laughs> no, it did not. That's a show I have watched a number of episodes of, and it goes in one ear out the other. I couldn't tell you what happens in a single fucking mm. episode of that show. It's just mm. like vapor. I don't know. But There's was, nothing wrong like, with it. I just don't absorb it. I guess I never watched Bob Burger, Bob's yeah. Burgers, but I was aware that the show was out there. Yeah. But mm. I saw that trailer all the time. So, I mean, for a non-watcher. Yeah. It did kind of give me like a greater awareness of it. Mm -hmm. And I always wonder, you know, like I was an X-Files fan. Yeah. But you wonder like, well, then, you know, basically the experience I'm having with Bob's Burgers is the experience that people had with the X-Files movie, you know? Right. And it's like, Mm -hmm. does it, does it still translate? I don't know. I mean, that's why I'm, I guess, you know, Mm -hmm. they're still doing it. They're still making TV shows into, Mm -hmm. into movies and, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, Travis Legler says, I enjoyed the X-Files as a kid. I was except obsessed with the cigarette smoking man. The episode with Bruce Campbell was awesome. There's uh, a Bruce Campbell episode? Yeah. What? Yeah. If I remember, <laughs> if I remember right, he's like a, I think he's a demon, but he's right. as a, as a human and he keeps trying to have a baby, but every time he has a baby, they turn out as a demon. He's very upset by this. This sounds <laughs> amazing. It sounds, sounds like I need hilarious. to watch it. Yeah. Yes. And he, it's a very mopey Bruce Campbell. Like he's, you know, upset. He really wants a you baby. Know, the whole, yeah. That's really funny. He just wants a normal baby, man. I think it's actually like from his point of view. Oh and God, Mulder you're... keeps on coming around and like Say bugging less. him. He's like, I just. I am, yeah. I am in. I want to yeah. watch this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but Travis goes on to say, this is one of the few films out there that I just don't have much of an interest to go back and see. Maybe I missed something. The X-Files will always be something from the nineties that forever changed the culture. And maybe you guys can help me figure out what I'm missing with its first big screen outing. Um, last week we watched a movie called orphan first kill. Yeah, yeah we did. And Ryan handsome Jansen wants to know if we've ever heard of the imposter crime, the story and the uh, or this story and the Julia Stiles and the son characters from Orphan First Kill could be very loosely based on that as the mom and her brother were accused of going along with thinking the imposter was their real son or brother based on the fact that two of them had covered up the boy's death. But authorities couldn't prove it, though. Oh, my God. What? No, I've not heard of this. But now I'm going to look for every podcast this and book I can about this. The, the imposter. imposter OK. Yeah. <gasps> Holy shit. Yeah. That, thank you for bringing that up. That sounds awesome. Nikhil will now jump down that rabbit hole. Yep. And <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> and uh, the week before that, we watched a movie called Significant Other. Um, and this apparently is the episode where everybody wrote in about Significant Other. Meg, who I think is part of the Micah Monroe fan club, says <gasps> Significant Other is my favorite Micah Monroe movie. It's, it's so much fun. Movie. And she and Jake are fantastic. And it deserves way more attention. I agree on all accounts. 100%. Yeah. Agreed. Well, we all recommended it. So yeah. uh, we're, we're all in the same boat. Teresa Ann says, I know some mentioned that this, some of you mentioned that this felt like Carpenter's The Thing or Invasion of the Body Snatchers. But to me, I was reminded the entire time of Annihilation mm-hmm. and even yeah. more of Stephen King's Dreamcatcher. Yes. Yeah, it's a lot sure. big Dreamcatcher. I mm-hmm. would say it's a better version of Dreamcatcher, I think. And the irony is, I guess we didn't talk about that on camera, but or on on uh, Mike. But it seemed to me that we mentioned Dreamcatcher and Annihilation like a lot when we were talking about that. I know. Yeah. Did we not talk? Maybe about we that didn't on Mike? say it on Mike. Maybe yeah. Maybe we said Mike. it would. Yeah. I don't remember. But what we were joking because like Paramount Plus almost immediately played Annihilation before yeah. the credits were even done. Yeah, it was like, on up his, next, it was Annihilation. Like Annihilation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ryan Larson says, "I watched this last week since you covered it." And it had a bit of an annihilation vibe. Yeah, it sure, sure did. He says it wasn't amazing, but it did hold my interest for ninety minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's an entertaining movie. Yeah. Uh, Steve Carney says I remember Jake Lacey from season one of The White Lotus, possibly the yes. best drama show I've ever seen. That's I love the Pacific show. Northwest setting, and it gets an eight out of ten from me. Any film featuring music from Badfinger is going to get high marks just for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Uh, David Forbes writes in and he says, I had to watch it after listening to your show and I really enjoyed it. Yay. Good. There you go. Good. You're welcome, right. Paramount Plus, for this bump in viewership on Significant Other. We you did more to promote it than you did. Reach us for sponsorships <laughs> at Saturday Night Freak Show, Yahoo.com. <laughs> Richard Kratzer writes in. 
and says, are Jake Lacey and Nicholas Holt interchangeable to anyone else? Or is it just me? It's just you. It's the eyes. I get I, <laughs> the shape of their eyes. I get it. But they're not. I don't think they're interchangeable. Mm-hmm. But I see the similarities. Yeah. I'm with you, Richard. I think. No, interchangeable. Okay. Stephen Helicopter says. <laughs> buzzing by. Tell Sean to pick some B-horror movie skin flicks. I miss it. Like when you guys did Sorority House Massacre 2. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. I I don't know if that's what's up next, but... Guess what? <laughs> Sean's movie pick is next week, so we're about to find out. But first, we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, The X-Files, starting Michaela. with... Michaela! Oh. All right. Start us off. Uh, So, yeah, I am by no means an X-Files expert, and I'm really sorry if this was frustrating for, like, you diehards to listen to. You're just, like, punching your steering wheel, being like, oh, my God, they don't know anything. Uh, A huge blind spot for me. But um, that being said, I have no ill will towards the series, and, like, the little bit I do know about it, I've liked and enjoyed. It's just, yeah, I just missed it. But I really enjoyed this movie, and I had a good time watching it, and I was more invested in it than I thought I was going to be. There were clear times where I was like, okay, this is clearly highlighting something I'm supposed to understand, but I don't. But those moments were few and far enough in between that you can still enjoy the movie, I think. Um, I mean, yeah, I kind of want to go back and watch the TV show now, especially hearing more about it, because, like, this is my jam. I I was a little freak kid, and I used to fall asleep listening to Coast to Coast AM with Art Bell, you know? So, like, this is my shit. So, I, I, I would recommend it. I think... I think X-Files has permeated the culture enough at this point that you know if you like it or you don't, Mm -hmm. right? You know if it's for you or if it's not. So use your best judgment. And if, like, a big expensive version of the X-Files sounds sounds good to you, then watch the movie. So I would recommend it. Holly, what do you think? Yeah, I I think uh, I agree with you on all that. I I would say as far as X-Files go, um, I wouldn't put this movie at the top of the must-see for X-Files. I think a lot of the show, a lot of the episodes of the show were way better. They're more entertaining um just as far as like story goes and I think the fact that they're shorter is is a big deal. I think X-Files was made to be short. I don't think it is 2-hour movie material. Um cuz there was a lot of moments in this movie that it kind of lost me like several exposition dumps, you know, monologues that was just like, "All right, just let's let's go. Let's speed it up. You you're losing me here." Um but it is but overall it is a decent movie like it's it's still entertaining it still had my attention i enjoyed it um so yeah i'm still going to recommend it but yeah i would say as far as x files go this is not a priority i would say there's a lot of um a lot of like milestone episodes that you should watch first um over this it's not like peak x files but it's still pretty good it's entertaining um definitely big budget it, you can see that in the movie um a lot of 90s time capsule moments that I really enjoyed. <laughs> um, yeah, and I agree with you. It kind of makes me want to go watch some old episodes because mm-hmm. I don't remember a lot of them. Um, and I think it deserves a revisit. So, yeah, I'm still going to recommend. Colin, take us home. I mean, when when we first started it up tonight and we're getting into those scenes and all that, you know, the Antarctic and then Texas and, and then the trucks pull in and mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, I'm. I was taken back, and I'm like, man, I I really like this movie. But you know, even by the time you got to the skyscraper you know, and they're mm-hmm. hunting the bomb and all that, I'm like, I really like this, and I I like the way that it's put together. Um, I don't know. I guess maybe like what Holly's saying. I don't know if it distills the essence of the TV show. Um, I'm gonna guess Holly that the reason that you're saying that is because you were more of a monster of the week person and not. The mythology. You are correct. That's how that I am that person. Yeah, I think that's how it breaks down. I think it's like you're either like you like the them hunting whatever what's the creature this week or the you know this one's about the big alien conspiracy Mm -hmm. and so the movie is obviously going to be about the big alien conspiracy because that's what's I guess the mythology that's original to the X Files and you know I remember the experience of watching it as a fan having seen at the point the movie came out. I'd seen all the episodes. Um, it was kind of like, well, you're not really telling me anything that I don't haven't already pieced together, but here it is actually set out loud, you know? So it was kind of like satisfying in that way. It was like, mm-hmm. it was rewarding to a fan of the show that it was like, okay, you know, I paid attention mm-hmm. and yep, that's, that was what's actually happening. Yeah. This is the goal, the end goal of the conspiracy. And this is how it was all going to work. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I really like those characters. Um, I, I keep, you know, uh, Mulder and Scully, I keep um, having that sensation every time that they bring it back. You know, it, it's weird. You spend so much time with them and then they make a movie and you're like, oh, this is, you know, big screen. Mm-hmm. But then when they came back with the second movie, it was like, oh, okay, they're doing an X-Files movie. But when you see it, you're like, oh, I missed them. And then it was the same thing when they brought back the, uh, the what well, was it, Reboot, who's mm-hmm. on... <clears throat> Sorry, it was like the later seasons of the X Files. It was like, oh my god, it's back in like 2017, 2018 or whatever. And uh yeah, I guess it's sad that it, you know, apparently we're never gonna get old old Mulder and Scully. Um but uh I don't know, I found this movie like very fascinating. I, you know, and I can't say if it works as uh you know being unfamiliar with it or not. Um, but to me it's like it reminds me of those big science fiction movies of the 1990s. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It does feel like you could watch Independence Day and X-Files. A you know, double feature. And they have yeah. similar vibe For sure. to them, you know? Uh, that was kind of what mm-hmm. uh, where the zeitgeist was, I guess, in the in the mid-90s, late mm-hmm. 90s. So, um, and I, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that I got. I like the score. I bought the albums. I bought the score album and the, the actual soundtrack album. And I kept picturing the uh, the Rolling Stone cover with them on it. Yeah. We oh, man, those. I forgot about that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I went to uh, Chicago to McCormick Place for an X-Files um, event. I think I wasn't even like a huge fan at that did. point, but I had an opportunity and I yeah. went, you know, and I don't think uh, if I don't, if I remember they weren't there, but some of the other characters like the lone, lone gunman, gunman yeah. <laughs> and you know deep throat and uh mitch pledgy was there you know and all that stuff and that was a lot of fun but yeah it was just uh kind of a a, a moment in time when x-files took over the pop culture uh now it's kind of died off but uh i'm glad that the movie still exists and you can go back and and check it out so i guess that makes uh all all three of us mm-hmm. are saying you gotta you gotta watch it then contractually yeah, show approved. Freak show approved. i think you and i didn't even think about the the fact that i think you're right i'm a monster of the week person i was thinking yeah. about like like if you've even like supernatural yeah i would much rather watch an episode where they're hunting a like wendigo or something rather than like the end of the world like storyline that's why that show yeah. like those later seasons i just couldn't care no. because like th- how many times can you kill god Seriously. You know, like they had to keep topping themselves. And then Seriously. it's like when they've like defeated hell and killed God so many times, like what more can they fucking do? Right. Yeah. And it didn't start off that way. Like right. the show started off in a much smaller like, scope. Hunting yeah. vampires yeah. or gins exactly. or, yeah, like mm-hmm. it was, yeah. And so then I wonder if the, I want to believe the second movie would be more up your alley. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Although it changes the dynamic between Mulder and Sky. I think they're living together or whatever okay. at yeah. that point in time. But, and she's quit and she's, uh, she's heading up, a, a hospital or something. I'm fine with that. The yeah. whole like, will they or won't they thing? It doesn't matter to me. Yeah. That's yeah, all over that. and done at yeah. that point. But, um, yeah. Um, sorry. Yeah. Check out X-Files fight the fuse. Uh, X Files. <laughs> dot dot dot. <laughs> Next week we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by Sean. Over to Sean's proxy. Sean's proxy reporting in. Um, <laughs> I've received word that we're going to be watching. There's nothing out there because 1991. Because he wants to follow up. The truth is out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there's nothing out there. Is but that the what future, he did? There's nothing out there. <laughs> oh my God, I hope that's why he picked it. I think that's why he picked it. Is oh. he that close? Should we message him now and see if we hear a response? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll report back. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Richard Crotzer should be happy then because yeah. it looks like it's a trauma movie and it's full of uh, a B horror movie skin flick. So there you go. There's nothing out there next week on the Saturday Night Free Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, the basement is going dark.